question from Jane, you have one, and then I'll come back to it. Probably don't need a microphone, because this makes me shout, this is you. Um, I talk personal choice. I'm stunned by the lack of imagination on the panel. And I don't understand the driver for it because this is one of, apart from going, this is one of those issues where it's the same as um, energy housing efficiency. Um, putting in some sustainable transport measures will create jobs and it's, it's about innovation. Anyway, but I am one of those individuals that did make, t take some personal action. And five years ago, I gave up my car. And um, mostly because I was making personal choices to use the bus, to use the trains, and I didn't fancy having a big lump of metal in my drive and paying taxes on it when I wasn't, why should I pay twice? Anyway, five months ago, I got a car again, because in the, in the intervening years, bus prices had gone up, car parking had gone down in Swindon, and my bus route had pretty much diminished. So every single change that I saw went in the opposite direction. So it's personal experience of Gary's general point. When individuals make a personal, there was no car club that came in, you know, everything went in the wrong direction and nothing went in the right direction. And uh, what, what, can, what can I do? And it just reflects, if my personal experience completely reflects Gary's, um, you know, more theoretical uh, suggestion. Andy? Yeah, um, a bit like Gina, I'm a bit stunned at the, at the complete lack of imagination of, by many of the panel members on, on, on transport. And yet it's all there for you. Now, all, all government policy says, you know, we need to have a mobile shift away from cars to sustainable transport. Your own document, your own vision documents say, say that. And yet, what have we seen over the last few years? I mean, you sit there and you say, you say that we have to have more car parking in the town centre because that's what drives the economy. Mean, you haven't tried anything else. That's you have not tried. Not you have not that. tried. You have not tried to encourage people into the town centre by promoting buses. And you're on the board of Thames Town Transport. So if anyone's best place to do it, you should be. You said there isn't the infrastructure because you blamed it on Murray John or John. You know, but if, if cars can come into town, then buses can come into town. So they're, they're, they're not, that cannot be an excuse. All the things we've seen Swindon do over the last five years since I've been here, five or seven years, have all been against sustainable transport, and you've done virtually nothing. Okay, I think that what I, I know from my affiliation with Scan, this is a, a topic that exercises a lot of people. Um, I don't want to dismiss it, but I want to give Peter a chance to, to come back on that before I take a couple more questions. Thank you. Um, you mentioned car clubs. One of the uh, things I had a meeting about earlier this week was about the introduction of the car club. As you may have heard, the council is looking at how, uh, if we're going to try and change things, we have to set the example. So we're looking at whether we provide our own employees with car parking spaces. If we don't, what can we do? Well, car club, Pull cars, bicycles, etc., etc., etc. Just because you don't read what is happening in the council in the local paper doesn't. Yeah, no, no. Just because you don't read it, because it not everything gets reported. There is a lot of things being taken out in the car parking spaces. You put it. There, 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 there is. There is Gina, let's get, let's just yeah, let me finish. We, we do have a car sharing website as well, which I hope everyone here has looked at. Um, we have not built new car parks in the last five or six years. As I said, we're looking at how we reconfigure car parking in the town centre. There is a demand for car parking in the town centre, but there is also a demand for bus use in the town centre. So as part of the uh, proposal <coughs> for the motor scheme, we're actually looking at a new bus terminus we're looking at improving access to the railway station. And so these things are happening. You're not hearing about them because they're not being reported. And there are some very exciting things happening. When I mentioned David Murray John, the point I was making was that if you have a pedestrianised town centre, it makes it very difficult for people to get to the heart of things. If you get a bus into the town centre, you're not getting into the heart of the town. The most sustainable towns I've ever visited actually have buses running right through the middle of them. In Swindon, we run buses around the town centre. And that actually changes people's perception and behaviour. 
I've said many times, I would actually like to run buses straight down Regent Street. Unfortunately, the cost of doing that now, because all the services are now running through the high street, all the drains, the communications cable, etc., 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 the council does not have the money to relocate major uh, phone lines from BT. We just can't do it. But my long-term vision actually is to get transport running through the town centre. But I didn't say cars. There is a lot happening. It just takes time. Yes, it does take resources. With regard to buses, we as a local authority do not have the money to fund a lot of bus services. We do actually subsidise a good number of bus services. There were questions in the council chamber last night about the subsidy on bus services. We have had to reduce some recently because in some cases we were paying over £29 per passenger journey for a subsidised bus route. That in itself is not actually sustainable. So what we're looking at is how we can work with not just the two bus companies we have, and I will declare an interest, I'm a non-executive director of Tentown Transport, I'm not paid by them. Um, we are talking to other potential operators who can operate things like community minibuses rather than the traditional model of having bus companies operate the things. When you have large organisations involved in running anything, the price goes up substantially. If you have community driven supported services, then actually you can deliver effective community based transport. Councils, in my opinion, shouldn't be running bus services. The people who should be running bus services are the community because they're the ones who use them or should be using them. Okay, thank you, Peter. I think I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to cut this particular topic uh, shortly.